Hello there viewers and welcome back to part 3 out of 3 of this trifle training final fight series. Now you might be wondering why we're watching the gameplay in super speed. This is actually because since I figured that I only have two lives left this wouldn't be enough to complete the game. So this first part will basically be me dying and getting a game over just so I can freshly start over in this level. Quite obviously I'm gonna pick Hagger again. Though in this video I want to start off talking about the third and last playable character, Cody. Gameplay wise he is the middle man of the three characters. Slower and stronger than Guy, but faster and weaker than Hagger. His weapon of specialization is the knife. In my playthrough you might have noticed Hagger picking up and throwing the knives. Guy does the same for that matter. Cody however holds on to them to do some stabbity stabbing. Storyline wise it is known that he grew up on the streets of Metro City and enjoys fighting and at this point in the timeline he has a relationship with Hagger's daughter Jessica which is the reason why he goes out to save her. He is 22 and likes milk and spinach. If you beat the game, it is shown he'll up and leave Jessica and Metro City to fight more crime and evil. Where Guy's storyline trivia was mostly about his interaction and connections with other characters, and for Hagger it was about his short but sweet past, with Cody it's his future that's most interesting. He is the last Final Fight character to become playable in the Street Fighter Alpha series, in his case the third installment. Though he actually went through the biggest changes in terms of design and personality. He has been thrown in jail by none other than Eddie E sometime after this game, having been framed for the assault crimes of regular Final Fight enemy Poison, who is not in this specific Final Fight game or at the port, rather, but more on that later. His storyline is that he just breaks out of prison whenever he feels like it, and then Eddie E chases him down again, as seen in Cody's win animations. He apparently breaks free by punching through the thick cement walls. Not surprising, since the characters do the same thing in this game. It's also why he has bandages over his hands, to cover up the scars from doing so. Though in Street Fighter Alpha 3 he didn't break out so much as walking out of prison, due to there being a riot which left a hole in his cell. This is reflected in his stage in said game. He doesn't care about being a hero anymore, and realizes he just wants to fight for the kick of it, not out of a sense of justice. Being thrown into prison after saving the day doesn't do your motivation much good, I guess. However, seeing as how he does pick his fights and battles only against wrongdoers, he is still a good guy inside, even if he is addicted to the violence. He is one of the three characters in the Street Fighter series who, by means of his handcuffs, voluntarily handicaps himself and his powers, the others being Akuma and Oro. My research into all this trivia gave rise to a question though. Just how powerful is Cody? This is mostly conjecture and speculation, but bear with me. In the previous video of this series, I mentioned how in Maki's Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max ending, Guy drives away Bison. Granted, the final boss was already weakened, having fought at least 15 opponents before this point, but this still left him insanely powerful afterwards, since he was able to stand up to the combined forces of Ken and Sakura, who were then joined by Sagat and Ryu, the latter of whom also drove Bison off, and after that he stood up to the trio of Charlie, Chun-Li and Guile, 
before ultimately being killed by his base being blown up by a bomb. You know, while he was in it. Admittably, I don't know if Maki's ending officially happened, but it doesn't conflict with anything like the other non-canon endings, so there's no reason to assume it didn't. This, however, does leave Guy as an impressively powerful individual, seeing as how Sagat and Charlie, who are amongst the strongest characters of the cast, weren't able to do in a team-up with others against an even weaker Bison than what Guy did on his own. Let's go back to the first video of this series, where I mentioned during the character select screen that there were two unlockable characters, Alpha Guy and Alpha Cody. By now I've talked about the Street Fighter Alpha series enough that you should realize that they are the versions of the characters from those games. This is reflected in their dialogue scenes, where they realize they are reliving their pasts. Why is this relevant, you ask? Well, both of them are faster and stronger than their Final Fight timeline counterparts, their stats having increased proportionally to their past selves and to each other. If this is true in this game, then there is no reason to assume the same isn't true in the games they originated from. And, as explored before, Guy's power was boosted exponentially by the end of the Alpha series. So if Guy is stronger than a weakened Bison, then Cody should be too. But there's more. I mentioned Akuma and Oro before, the two strongest characters in the Street Fighter universe. While I can't compare Oro, who hails from Street Fighter 3, with Cody since he was not playable in that game, I can draw comparisons with Akuma. Gauki, as he is known in Japan, is so insanely powerful that even in his youngest, and by that extension, weakest incarnation in Street Fighter Alpha, he was able to destroy an island by punching it. And chances are he was holding back there, since it changes into his shin form when he fights his full power. Let's skip forward to Street Fighter 4. Storyline-wise, it takes place several months after Street Fighter 2. Since that game's events happened in 1993, this one should be somewhere around the late ends of the year or the early months of 1994, which places it around 5 to 6 years after Street Fighter Alpha 2 where Akuma destroyed his island. This is a period of time in which he should have grown even stronger. Because that's what Akuma does, continuously train better himself. But that's not the end of it. In the arcade edition version of Super Street Fighter 4, an updated version of an updated version of the fourth installment in the series, he has a new and even stronger form called Oni. Basically Akuma's body overtaken by the Satsui no Haru. This translates into search of murderous intent and is a form of key that Akuma uses to obtain his superhuman abilities. As a testimony of his power, he is engulfed in lava in his ending, and walks away unscratched. It has been stated that the developers conceived Oni as Akuma beyond Shin Akuma, so it must be one of, if not the strongest entities in the Street Fighter universe. He is even called a god or deity by several of the characters. But, here's the kicker. Cody was again made a playable character as one of the 10 new ones added in Super Street Fighter 4. If he wins in a fight against Akuma, he will say that he thought he was rather weak and that he is unimpressed by his strength. Better yet, when facing Oni as him, the opponent will mention that he can sense that Cody is holding back and that he might actually survive if he doesn't. And if you win, Cody says he rather enjoyed the fight. Could this mean that Cody is the second strongest character in the series? Huh? Who is the strongest you ask? Well, obviously Hagger. I mean, he beats opponents of superpower strength levels like the Hulk, of cosmic levels like Galactus, and celestial levels like Arthur. 
You just can't compete with that. So I didn't get an opportunity yet, but we're actually fighting Belger now. The final boss of the game. Belger is his surname, and I've seen his first name being listed as Horus. But I can't find anything official on the matter. Nor am I sure where it comes from to begin with. He rides in a wheelchair for no apparent reason, since he is obviously perfectly able of walking. Perhaps it's to make him look frail so enemies won't attack him or something. In Streetwise it was revealed that he was an immigrant who came to the USA to seek happiness or the American dream of getting rich. So he was probably poor before he worked himself up to be the big boss. This might be why he sympathizes with the low-life youth, or at least that's what his dialogue with Hagger just now implied. In the canon, he is killed by Cody throwing, or more likely punching him out of the window. Though, I guess it's the impact with the grounds from falling so high that did him in. And that's basically it for Belger. For the final boss of the game, there isn't a lot of information to find about him. Now, look at these credits though. I wonder why the developers felt the need to use pseudonyms. And how did they come up with these names? But there's actually a good amount of high profile fellows in here. Yauki chans papa, for example, is Yoshihiro Sakaguchi best known for his work on early arcade and NES games, mostly for the Mega Man and Street Fighter series, but also games like the earlier mentioned Forgotten Worlds, DuckTales for the NES and Breath of Fire. Bull, or rather Toshiho Kajino, took over as head of Capcom's sound department in 1993, and games from then till 8 years later would use his sound effects, including games like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, The Punisher, the Dog Stalkers and Street Fighter Alpha series, and early Marvel vs. Capcom games. Akiman just now passed by, and he is Akira Yasuda, whose pen name actually makes sense. He is a character and game designer who has also worked on Captain Commando, Magic Sword, Red Earth, and both of the Power Stone games. Up next is T. Arthur, or Tokuro Fujiwara, who is best known for creating two series that are loved for the difficulty, Mega Man, and Ghosts and Goblins, amongst a long list of other games he directed or produced. Nin, or Akira Nishitani, did the designs for an amount of games, but I think the most interesting is when he left Capcom to form Arika, which made the Street Fighter EX series. Then we have Pooh as the last one, or Noritaka Funamizu, as his real name is. No idea why he calls himself Pooh. Either he really stinks, or he has low self-esteem. At any rate, he has worked on way too many games to name, but he was the general manager of Capcom's Production Studio 1 up to 2004. Speaking of aliases, this is the end of this video, so this was Yop Who Am I, signing off.